God bless everybody watching me. I'm excited to be live. I'm super excited. Way, way excited that I could not wait to come and talk to you. Just come on in, everybody. I see we have so many people that are tuning in on Facebook. Just let me know where you're watching me from. Let me know where you are. And don't forget to share the broadcast. Don't forget to share the broadcast with your friends, with your loved ones. I want to see on YouTube what's going on. But don't forget to share the broadcast. Share the broadcast with your friends, with your loved ones. Tell somebody that we are live. Tell somebody that we are live. I'm excited. And remember, today's topic, how to know your spiritual name. That's very powerful, man. You don't usually get that on Sunday. And just because one does not get it on Sunday, it does not mean that it's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible. I'm excited. I just want to see some YouTube people right here. Uh, I want to see some YouTube people right here. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, okay, there we go. YouTube, I have uh, excellence watching. Oh, Facebook. Facebook uh, picked up so quick. Um, I have Silas watching me. I have Song, I believe that's a very powerful name, Song, watching the Apostle. And also, Oratile is with us tonight. Go ahead, share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we are live. Ashla is also here. Uh, Johannes from Botswana is also here. And... I believe Matilda is excited about the topic, how to know your spiritual name. This is so powerful that I believe after this teaching, your life will never be the same again. And not only will this change you, but this will change whoever comes after you. So go ahead, share the broadcast and let somebody know that we are live. All right, let's get straight to it. I think I'm hearing myself twice some way. So let's get straight to it and we, we flow. I'm excited too. I'm excited too. YouTube, I see Alpha is also here watching from, I believe that's Namibia on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, just make sure that you comment so I see that you're here. We have Marshall as well, um, Winnie, saying, bring it on, Major Apostle Say. Uh, Teboho, Teboho is also here. A delegate, it's good to see you. A delegate is forever online. All right, let's talk about this. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is very important for you as a believer and for you as a spiritual person, for you as a child of God, not only to know your name that you are given, the name that you are given by your biological parents, but also to know your spiritual name. And today we are talking about how to know your spiritual name. And I know so many people are wondering, where is it in the Bible? Is it necessary? How many people out there made it without knowing their spiritual name? The question is, are you sure they did not know their spiritual names? And one thing about spiritual names is, it's not as complicated as you think. You know, you do not have to uh, be that deep in the things of God. The moment you fully dedicate and give your life to the things of God, things of the Spirit, uh, God will reveal your name, your spiritual name in a dream. Because your spiritual name is not something that just gets you excited, but it's something that is connected to your assignment, number one. Number two, uh, if you're writing, you might as well as write down. So your spiritual name is something that is connected. I see so many people are excited to be here. So when we talk about your spiritual name, we are talking about uh, 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 you know, something that is connected 
uh, to your uh, assignment. You know, it represents your assignment. So if we say your spiritual name, we are actually saying what represents your assignment. That's your spiritual name, not only your assignment, but it also represents your authority, represent the authority, the access that you are given. It represents the access that you're given, your spiritual name. I'm about to minister to you, but I'm just laying my foundation here and building my argument. And as soon as I go deeper, trust me, you'll wish this uh, message um, you know, can just continue just like that. And number three, your spiritual name speaks of your identity, who you are in the spirit. Because in the spirit, uh, you are not the same person that we kind of like interact with every day. I'll give you an example, though my message has nothing to do with this. When Jesus was born, the angel of the Lord in the book of Matthew, actually also in the book of Luke. I like it in Matthew because in Matthew, when it goes deeper in Matthew chapter one, where the angel, when Joseph was really, really frustrated about Mary being pregnant and she's saying that the Holy Spirit is the one that did this to me and she, he was about to marry her, he's confused. But because the Bible speaks about he was a man, he was a humble man, right? And he was a noble man. And he didn't wanna expose Mary or rather mess her up. In, uh, in front of the people. That's what the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, look, uh, this woman here, what caused her to be like this is the power of the Most High. And the angel went further to say, his name shall be called who? Jesus. And the same angel goes deeper to say, as Isaiah said, that he shall be called Emmanuel. So we have two names here. When Isaiah was prophesying about the coming of the Lord Jesus, he said, God is with us and he shall be called Emmanuel. But when the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, the angel never said, he shall be called Emmanuel. The angel said, he shall be called Jesus. So we have a prophetic name that Isaiah saw. And indeed he saw it because in John 3, when a man called Nicodemus went to Jesus at night, Nicodemusly, and said, no man can do what you are doing except God is with him. Another vision says, unless God is with him. In another words, Nicodemus knew that Jesus was the Emmanuel because it's unless God is with him. So Jesus was to be called Emmanuel, God with us. But the angel never mentioned that. The angel said, he shall be called Jesus. But the same Jesus, if you go to heaven and you begin to say Jesus, nobody knows Jesus in heaven. If you go to heaven today, and those that have had encounters and those that have been in heaven, I don't care if it's the first or second heaven, you know that the name of Jesus does not exist in heaven. If you say Jesus in heaven, even angels will be confused. Why? Because he's not called Jesus there. That's why Revelation chapter 19, it speaks verse 13. It says his name is called the word of God. Hence now John, when he begins to write in John 1, 1, he says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and uh, the, the word was God. And guess what? That's the name of uh, our Lord. The name of our Lord is uh, the word of God in heaven. But here on earth, he was called Jesus. But not only Jesus, he was also called Jesus Christ. I want to show you the importance of names. When he is, when he was, before he was born, he was to be called Emmanuel. But when he was about to be born, as soon as the mother conceived, he was now called he was to be called Jesus. And throughout the assignment, uh, you know, walking on earth, he's called Jesus until he gets to Matthew 16 when he was in the place called Caesarea Philip with his disciples. And he turns and he says to them, who do men say I am? And Philip answered, Bartholomew answered, Nathaniel answered, James answered, John answered. Some they say you are Elijah. Some they say you are Jeremiah. Some they say you are one of the old prophets. And guess what? That's what people were saying. And that was not wrong. But that was a public opinion. What Jesus wanted was a private opinion. That's why he asked again, who do you say I am? And nobody could answer that one. And Simon Bajona stood up and said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. From Matthew chapter one to Matthew chapter 15, never ever in the Bible, you see the word Christ. Jesus was not called Jesus Christ. But when he asked, who do you say I am? Peter downloads a revelation that was not yet permitted to be downloaded, so to say. He, 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 he formed the realm of mysteries 
and came up with something that baffled the mind of Jesus. Hence, Jesus says a statement that he has never said. He says to him, flesh and blood, hear me very well, how to know your spiritual name. He says, flesh and blood <laughs> did not reveal this unto you, but my Father in heaven revealed this unto thee. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Now, what does that mean? It is because the word or the name Christ, Jesus was to be given that name after the cross. You could not have operated right in that name or used that name before the cross because the name Christ was on the other side of the cross. He had to die first for him to be given Christ, the name Christ. Because even the angel, if you remember, it said, Jesus, this is Jesus. It never said Jesus Christ. But when this guy revealed this, Jesus said, but this is only in the spirit. And this is only my, what my father knows. Jesus did not say, where did you get that? Who told you that's me? He didn't say, uh, thou art Emmanuel. He said, thou art Christ. A name that you and I never heard before. And guess what? That was his name too. So today I'm teaching and I'm talking about, this has nothing to do with our, our message. I'm just trying to build something so that you understand that even our Lord Jesus, his name was not meant a different thing here on earth as much as the name was different in heaven and meant a different thing. Now a name represents your assignment. A name represents your authority. A name carries your identity. Now, the reason why he was called Jesus on earth is because he, the word Jesus means the Savior. It, it comes from the word the Messiah, the Savior. Does that make sense to you guys? So, it was connected to his assignment. So, he would not have come here as the word of God. But in heaven, he's called the word of God. Why? Because the Bible speaks about the word of God remaining when heaven and earth disappears or passes. So he is the everlasting. He is the beginning and he is the end. So he's the word of God. But when he came here based on another assignment, he was given a name. And that name made the assignment possible. What are you saying? There are things in your life that you will never perform. There are things in your life that you will never, be able, you will never do, you will not be able to do unless you know your spiritual name. Your own children, you might not be able to bless them, you yourself, because you don't know your spiritual name. Oh, I just said something very powerful right there. Um, I want to I wanna show you something. I want to show you something that is very powerful in the Bible. Uh, so many people are connected. And if you have not shared the broadcast, go ahead, share the broadcast, and let somebody know that we are live. God bless you, Fidelia, for sharing the broadcast. And uh, God bless Eshla for sharing the broadcast. God bless everybody that is sharing the broadcast. Thank you, Munitao for sharing this broadcast as much as it's blessing you, let it bless others as well. So I said something very powerful. I said, there are things in your life you will never ever be able to do unless you know your spiritual name. I will give you just a, a simple uh, biblical foundation, all right, so that you stop arguing with what I'm about to say based on what you know. Let me start by the Bible. You see, the Bible was written, and of course it's inspired, so that you and I can learn from it, not stop where it stops. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Remember, when we say this is the word of God, the truth of the matter is this is not the word of God. This is the experiences of the apostles, how they viewed the world. If I was to wake Paul up right now and say, Apostle Paul, write a book to the people in South Africa, in Chabalala, trust me, you will write a different story. So when we say the word of God, we are not talking about the book that Paul wrote. Hence, you find Paul arguing with his people who actually followed Peter and started listening to Peter, and he came up and said, am I not an apostle? Didn't I perform miracles? Am I not the one who ministered the gospel to you? You see now that he's actually fighting for his people, but it's in the Bible. And not only that, in the book of Peter, Peter complains about how Paul writes books. He says the way he writes, these things are not making sense. 
That's what Paul, Peter was saying about Paul. It's in your Bible. I think I told about that, right? The way he writes. He was saluting. In fact, he was complaining and not finding, what does this guy, why, why, what's going on with this guy? So what we call the word of God, it's simply the experience of the apostles. And we know that because the same Peter, before his book was released, he says, for we are not born of the corruptible, but we are born of the incorruptible, which is, another version is, by the word of God. And what was he calling the word of God? Praise the Lord, everybody. So we understand when Hebrews 4, 12 says, the word of God is powerful. And it's quick, sharper than any double-edged sword. What word of God, because these books that we are reading in the New Testament were not yet written and they were not reading them like this. The Bible says in the book of Acts 19, so mightily grew the word of God in the city of what? Of Ephesus. And it prevailed. What word of God is the Bible talking about? Because they were not having the Biblia. The 66 books that we have, the library of books, they had the scrolls, they had the Torah, the, the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, but they did not have what we have. Hallelujah. Hence, it's very important for you that every time when you study the word and you go for the word, you kind of understand the context of the text than just understanding the pretext of the text. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'll, another example that I'll give you so that when I explain what I'm about to explain, you understand. Peter says, ye are a chosen generation. Ooh, oh my goodness. Some people are getting it. Some people are, are excited to be here as much as I'm excited. So Peter says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. What you don't know and what you don't see there, you know what he said? Ye are. He didn't say we are. In another words, he was talking about a certain group of people. Oh, you didn't hear it. He didn't say we are a chosen generation. Peter said ye are. Meaning he was talking about a certain group. A group that had what they did not have. Hence he said ye are. He did not say we are. Does that make sense to somebody? Now, anyway, the Bible speaks about, let's turn into the book of John. And if you have not shared the broadcast, go ahead, share the broadcast and let somebody know that we are live. So many people are connected on YouTube and so many people are connected on Facebook. Uh, I see somebody saying it's my first time to tune in. Wow, I'm so blessed. We are also blessed to have you here. Go ahead um, and share the broadcast. Somebody saying so profound. That's uh, Mandisi. Uh, Silas is chai already. <laughs> the book of John chapter 1. And I want us to read verses 14. Uh, verses 14. Verse 14 of John chapter 1. I will read. It reads, and those that normally write, for us, please do right so that those that are tuning in will know what we are reading and where we are. Verse 14 says, ah, help me Lord. Verse 13. So, sorry. Verse 13. So, let's read verse 13. It says, which were born, but in order for us to understand 13, let's understand 12. It says, but as many as received him, but for us to understand 12, let's understand 11. It says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Who? Ooh. Another vision says, recognize him not. <laughs> Twelve. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, verse 13. Oh, my God. It says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. Your NIV will say, which were born not out of their mother or their father's will. Another version will say, not of their parents' will, but they are born of God. I am called Mzwake because that was from my parents' will. But the day I got born again, I was no longer born 
again, I was not born again out of my mother and my parents' will. But I was born of God. Mzwake is the name that my mother gave me. But when I got born again, I became a new baby. If I became a new baby, let me give you another example so that you guys can understand these things, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 to 7, 17 tells us that if you are in Christ, you are a new being, right? In fact, you're a new creation, so to say, not a being, right? And all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, right? That does not just mean your sins, but that means everything about you. To an extent that you receive a spiritual name immediately. Hence, a man called Saul could not continue the assignment of God as Saul. He had to be called Paul. Why? Because your spiritual name represents your authority, represents your assignment, represents how far you can go. The sons of Sceva came to a possessed man. And remember, Sceva was a priest, meaning there were, they were people who understood the books of the law. And they got there, they said, come out in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. The demons never said, who is Paul? The demon said, Paul we know. They did not say Saul. Why? Because that was his spiritual name. And even in the spirit, demons recognized him with his spiritual name. And they said, Jesus we know. They did not say the word of God we know. But Jesus we know. And they looked at them and said, but who are you? You see, there are other blessings in your life that will never materialize until your name, your spiritual name is registered. I'll give you another example. One time, you know, uh, in Africa, well, in fact, in South Africa, I think five years ago, that's when we started, uh, you know, making sure that your SIM card was registered, right? Back in, the day, you, back in the days, you just buy a SIM card. It didn't matter what network, and you just kaka, use it, right? It did not matter what SIM card. It didn't matter what phone. But now, I don't care how expensive your phone is. If you buy a SIM card and you don't register that SIM card, in South Africa, of course, we say Rika it. If you don't Rika it, okay, guess what will happen if you don't Rika it? You won't have network. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. So some of you, in the spirit, you don't have network because your name is not registered. And why is it that your name is not registered? It's because you yourself, you don't know your name. You know what the Bible says? Oh, I wish I could talk to some people right here. I see some people are getting it. Um, on Facebook, uh, we do have uh, Kina Ape uh, saying, Oh my God, uh, Nonkazumule is here, powerful teaching. Uh, praise God, glory. Where is this pastor from? From South Africa. And thank you for tuning in. And uh, YouTube as well is picking up, uh, have Nomfundo Kele if I said your surname right, but that's with a C. Saying, my God, we have uh, Colin as well in Suku, saying, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I have Nati as well saying, talk to us, Major. Uh, teach on Apostle Maxon Luhutso is also here. Lord, reveal my name. I want you to type what this uh, person typed here, Nomfundo. I want you to type, Lord, reveal my name. Because that's what we are going to do tonight, okay? And I'm going to help you navigate ways into finding out your spiritual name, all right? We can have this uh, off since they were. Okay, so uh, so many people are getting it, right? You know what the Bible is saying? The Bible speaks about the Russians will be delivered by what? By knowledge. The Russians will be delivered by what? By knowledge. So if the righteous will be delivered by knowledge, as a matter of fact, it says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. But if you read it in another translation, it says the righteous. The just they appears to be the righteous. So it says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So sometimes the deliverance you need in order for you to walk in the reality that God wants you to walk in is not you rolling on the ground, but knowledge. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because knowledge can set you free. My people are dying. Why? Because they lack 
knowledge. Praise the Lord, everybody. So, uh, if you have not shared the broadcast, if you have not shared the broadcast and you are just tuning in, you are more than welcome. Just share the broadcast with the people that follow you and the people that are your friends, your Facebook friends, your pages that allow you to share your groups, your Christian groups, because this is very important. I know in the church they don't talk about this. The thing is, no one can teach something that they don't know anything about. Okay, the more you know, the more you function. The less you know. Whoever feeds you guides your convictions. Never ever you are, think you are safe with a man who just knows the book of Matthew. Because there are deeper realms when it comes to the realities of God. And the Bible is not a limit. Hence, when you read the book of Acts, it does not have an amen like other books. Why? Because this is an act of apostles, act of believers. So we are part of the book of Acts. And from there, we are supposed to continue the book. Jesus said, those who believe in me will even do greater. In other words, the Bible on its own expects us to do things that are not even written in the Bible. I'm not saying the issue of spiritual names is not written, it's there. <laughs> I'll give you another example. In Caesarea Philip, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 9, after he asked them, who do you say I am? And nobody knew he, who he was. If he was looking for Jesus, he would not have asked that question. He was looking for another name. Hence, when Simon gave him, he said flesh and blood did not reveal this. And he goes further. He says from today, watch this, you are no longer going to be called Simon. But you be called Peter. And as soon as he says Peter, and then he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Do you hear that? So in another words, before I build my church, the problem is not my church. The problem is your name. I want to do something, but your name does not allow me to do it. But now, your name cannot come until you understand the revelation of who I am. But that was for Peter. Understand? So as soon as he gives him the name Peter, he changes his name immediately. Imagine, this is Jesus, the architect of the universe, the master of creation, creator of all, the keeper of creation. He who holds the main pillars of the universe by his word. He always was, always is, and forever will be unmoved, unchanged, undismayed, undefeated. And he looks at this guy and he says, yes, you are with me. But for me to do what I'm about to do and for me to do what I want to do, you need to operate on a different name. And he says, you are Peter, no longer Simon. And guess what? From that day, the Bible never called that guy Simon. It called that guy Peter. Just to remind us, it will put uh, Simon in brackets so that you know this is the Peter who the name was changed to Peter. And guess what? It says, behold, I've given you keys of the kingdom. I've given you access. I've given you rights to things that no man can fathom. But what caused him to have access to that was the name. When his name was revealed, he understood that I'm no longer just a small boy. You see, it is very important and it is prophetic and profound at the very same time for you to know your spiritual name. Hallelujah. I wish you'd say, bring it on, Apostle. When you read the Bible, what I'm about to say will help you, but at the same time will mess you up. What I'm about to say will help you. When you read the Bible, the Bible speaks about us or talks about us being the seed of Abraham. Not the seed of Abram, but the seed of Abraham. We don't come from the man who was called in Genesis chapter 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. We come from a man in the book of Genesis chapter, it should be chapter 17. Uh-uh. You see, there, there, there is a huge difference between the man in chapter 12 of Genesis and the man from chapter 17 of Genesis. Just as you deal with two different people when you deal with Adam in Genesis chapter 2, 7 and you are dealing with Adam in Genesis chapter 1, 27. So we are dealing with different people, right? One person, of course, but different authority. Different assignment. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't come from Abram. I come from Abraham. I'm a seed of Abraham, not a seed of Abram. In Genesis, chap in Genesis chapter 17, and you read from verses 5, he says, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram. But thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. All along he was Abram. But for him now to walk in this new face, for him now to carry all the nations in his loins, he had to receive his spiritual name. Because his spiritual name was connected to his assignment. I will, I will, I will show you something. The, the, the reason why this is important is because there is always transition between creation and formation. I wish somebody would say, what are you saying, Apostle? What are you, saying, Apostle? you see, there is always a transition between creation and formation. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 27, God created men. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 7, God formed men. So we have a man who's created and a man who's formed. But now Genesis chapter 1 men and Genesis chapter 2 men are two different people. God never gave dominion to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 men. But God gave dominion to Genesis chapter 1 verses 27 men. But Genesis chapter 1 27 men was taken and he was put inside Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 men. So if you entertain Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 men, you will miss the authority and the dominion that Genesis chapter 1 27 men has. And this is a man who's created not formed. There is always transition between creation and formation. What am I saying? You see, in the spirit, Jeremiah 1 5, I knew you before you were born. Before you were formed in your mother's belly belly. Before you were in your mother's belly belly, I knew you. He didn't say, I heard about you. He said, I knew you. Meaning somewhere, somehow, there was a place where Jeremiah was. And God knew about him. As much as he's a physical man, God was saying, you are a spirit man. Hallelujah. This is, oh my God. Let me find a better way to explain it even uh, so that those that are just, um, you know, joining for the first time and they don't even know the Bible will understand. When you read the Bible, you realize that there is a man called David. David is a sheep boy. He's looking after his father's sheep. He's taking care of his father's sheep. God bless everybody that is giving. We have so many people that are giving while he's alive. Uh, we, we see that God bless you, everybody. Now, he's taking care of his father's sheep. But when God looks at David, he does not see a sheep boy. Are you listening to me? Amen. When God looks at David, he does not see a sheep boy. He sees a king. But because there is always a transition between creation and formation, where he was born played a major role into who he became. Until God sent Apostle Mis, sorry, until God sent Prophet Samuel to go and change that. Amen. Where he was born, where he landed, are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. They gave him a name and gave him an assignment. But before formation, there is creation. And in creation, God sees him in a palace. In formation, his father sees him in the bushes. Hence, John 1, 13 says, you are no longer born out of your parents' will, but you are born of God. In other words, you have went back to who you really are. Before your father knew you. Hence, the Bible says, children are a blessing from the Lord. Another version says, are an inheritance. Meaning, it's something that you inherit. It's not yours, but you inherit from the Lord. It's transferred to you. It's given to you. Hence, you don't just wake up with any name and think you're just going to have access. You see, the spiritual world is so deep and so big, vast at the same time. Not complicated, just complex. 
that there are things you will never unlock or do, even, I don't care even if you can preach your lungs out. There are dimensions in the spirit that you will never see or walk in unless you know your spiritual name. Some of you, you are going through cycles and your miracle is in you knowing your spiritual name. And this is not a mystery. Some of you in dreams, God revealed your spiritual name. But because you were called by a name that you have never heard and you don't know interpretation of dreams, you woke up and you said, why did that person call me by that name? One person once had a name and they saw me in their dream and I was calling them with a certain name. And when they woke up, they remembered that name. They wrote it down. They came to church and said, Apostle, you called me with this name. I've never heard this name before. I said, this is your spiritual name. Hallelujah. <sighs> Some people are getting it. We have so many people that are connected on YouTube and so many people that are connected on, uh, on Facebook as well. Uh, Somebody is having Down syndrome. I'll pray for that person. Um, don't worry. We, 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 we are going to minister to that person and I believe tonight is their night. Amen. Hallelujah. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in the demonstration of power. Yes. So I've seen your comment. Uh, it's just that your name, so I can't pronounce that name, but don't worry. I've already seen it. We're going to minister to your sister. Amen. We're going to minister to your sister. And the power of God is going to touch your sister. I wish somebody would say, Lord, reveal my spiritual name. Hmm. Just type wherever you are, Lord, reveal my spiritual name. That's why it is so important for you to follow my teaching on dreams, the interpretation of dreams, where I was interpreting people's dreams. And guess what? There is a book that is coming on uh, how to interpret dreams. Not just dreams, but any dream that you can literally have a friend say, I said, I had a dream, and you just know how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. There, you know, we are teaching. You can hear this teaching is deep, so you can imagine what we put in a book. Hallelujah. And it's going to be available in all digital platforms. So get ready. The month of May. The book is coming next month. Not June. Next month. So you have to get that book. And in that book, we have 37 dreams. 37 dreams. Not only 37 dreams. I'm teaching about how to interpret dreams and what dreams mean and what dreams are from God and what dreams do you know this one is from God. And then right there, I'm talking about 37 dreams you should never ignore and their meanings. And once you know them, you go far. All right, so are we still getting it? Amen. Go ahead, share the broadcast. Some people, I have Mel Harmony saying, Lord, reveal my spiritual name. I hear you well, well. I want my own too. Lord, reveal my spiritual name. Lord, reveal my spiritual name. I also have uh, Lungisani, uh, you know, who's saying, Lord, reveal my spiritual name. Uh, we also have Joey saying, Lord, reveal my spiritual name. We have uh, Nsuku saying, Lord. We have Shelly saying, Lord, reveal. Elizabeth is also here. Tyler is also here. Prophet A. Maumela is also watching and is also part of us uh, tonight. Thank you, Prophet, uh, for tuning in. Wow, I'm getting that book, so a lot of people are excited about that. So now let me show you one thing in your Bible. Open 10 with me into your Bibles. This now tells you everything about your spiritual name. And I'm just going to, as soon as you understand the teaching, it's easy for me to say, this is how you get your spiritual name. Because without a teaching and a sound teaching, I'm telling you, you will error. Some of you, your names on their own, they don't make sense. And some of you don't even know what your name means. Some of you, you know that your name means this. I remember one time I was prophesying to a guy and their name meant sorrow. Immediately, when I was prophesying, I said, Sir, I'm not going to call you sorrow. Just allow me to call you Sir for now. And then we'll deal with your name later. Hence, if you have seen me prophesy through the Spirit of Grace, I ask people, What's your name? Sometimes, if I reveal that name through the Spirit of Grace, I'll say, What does your name mean? And the person will tell me. And from that, I'm able to prophesy. We can prophesy using your name and we can get every detail that has to do with you just by you telling us your name. 
because names are so important. Hence, even God himself in the Bible, you know, he, he, he's a God who actually, you know, uh, uh, changed his names in seasons, in different places to different people. To Abraham, one time, he appeared as Jehovah Jireh. And one time he appeared as Jehovah uh, 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 Nisi. You know, he, he, he was the provider. One time he's, he was might. But those are his attributes. But guess what? To Moses, he said, I am that I am. And we're like, what? He says you'll be with Pharaoh in the future, but when you get there, you don't say I was. He gave him a grammatically wrong statement. He said when you get there, tell him I am that I am has sent you. Hey, oh my goodness. And when you read in Malachi, it says, I am the Lord, I change not. In Hebrew, it says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but his name keeps on changing. What's the same? The same is his uh, justice, his ability, his power. Hallelujah. But his name changes. From, from Emmanuel, from Messiah, from Jesus, from Christ, from Lord, <laughs> to the word of God. When you read the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, when, uh, from verses 36, when Elijah was praying with the prophets of Baal, he said, oh, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Hi. Now, Genesis chapter 49, it should be 49. I'm about to close. This will be, this now is the teaching of the day that will take me four minutes. Yeah, all along I was laying my foundation. Somebody said, how will I know my spiritual name? By listening until I finish. All right, I want to show you something very powerful. If you don't get this, I don't know what you get. And I'm saying that with all humility and with all humbleness. Uh, Genesis chapter 49, verses 2, it says what? Gather yourselves... In fact, let me wait for you to get it. If you have it, say I have it. Just type and say I have it. Genesis 49. And if somebody can get it on Google quickly and paste it so that people who don't have their Bibles can see it, that will be good. And thank you in advance. So Genesis 49, we read verses 2. It says, gather yourselves together. And here, ye sons of Jacob. Ah, first time King James, King James 1611 approved, uh, approved disappoint, disappointing me. I will read it in NIV because it's in my, it's in my mind. <laughs> and Jacob gathered his sons together. All right? Still the same thing, but I mean... I like it straightforward. Okay, let's stick to 1611 approved King James because that's what we are reading. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of who? Jacob. And haken unto Israel your father. You didn't hear what the Bible say. Who gathers them? Jacob. Who, did they, who do they listen to? Israel. <laughs> who gathers these 12 boys? Jacob, who do they listen to? Israel. It's not a mistake. Read it again. Let's see. That's Genesis 49 verses 2. It says, gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So they are not hearkening, of course it's hearkening, hearkening to the voice of Jacob, but they're hearkening to the voice of Israel. What does this mean? It tells you that Jacob can gather, but Jacob cannot bless. Jacob can gather, but Jacob cannot bless. You see, in life, there is a huge difference between somebody who has received a blessing and somebody who is a blessing. You see, if you have received a blessing, you can transfer it. But if you are a blessing, you are to transfer it. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So people who are a blessing are to transfer the blessing to people who don't have it. 
So Jacob, gather your sons and Israel, speak to them. You might think it's two people. It's actually one person who's gathering. When the Bible says, and hearken to the voice of your father Israel, it's not like Jacob is their brother or their uncle. He's still the same guy. But the Bible is showing you the importance of spiritual names. Amen. That with spiritual names, there are certain things you can do that your name that your mother and your father gave you cannot. When the angel of the Lord appeared to a man called Jacob, and the Bible says he wrestled with the angel the whole night. The angel of the Lord. I wish I could talk to somebody right here. Mm. Are you guys getting this? Amen. The angel of the Lord did not say, what do you want? Hallelujah. Because Jacob said, I will not leave you until you bless me. The angel did say, okay, since you want me to bless you, what exactly do you want? Nope. But the angel said, what is your name? <laughs> so the problem with Jacob is not the blessing, but the problem is with his name. Some of you, you are not delayed. You are not stagnant. You are not as cursed as you think you are. You don't know your name. You see, unless you understand why something is important, it's useless for you to get it. Some of you, the reason why you have not received your spiritual name Yet when you read the Bible, you are excited because God, in the Bible, it says, I've called, I've, I've called you and I've, I've, I've given you a new name. And you read that and you get excited, but you don't ask what name. You read about the Bible speaking about a new heaven. But when it gets to earth, it's called Jerusalem. Oh my God. It's in the book of Revelations. Heaven, when it gets here, it's given another name. Why? Because a name represents your identity. Your name represents your authority. And it also represents your assignment. There are things that will never be revealed to you until you understand or know your spiritual name. I'm about to talk about how. Three things that will help you know your spiritual name. But I need you to share the broadcast. I want you to tell somebody that we are live and um, God bless everybody watching and those that are watching for the very first time. You're more than welcome to share this broadcast with your friends, with your loved ones, and um, you can save it if that's okay with you. And uh, those that are wondering where, where are we, we are in South Africa. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we do have branches in so many places. We have a branch in America. We have a branch in Canada, in Botswana. And um, we do have online cell groups in different places depending on where you are from. And in all the nine provinces, you are more than welcome to go to our website and register to be part of our cell groups and also our Bible study. But then again, church is open. Currently, we are in Midrand, Johannesburg. So that's where the branch is open right now in our new branch. And um, you are more than welcome to come and join us this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, we are dealing with altar visits and altar. <laughs> power visits power. People are against altars, but they read the same Bible and it says, and the throne of God, before the throne of God, there was an altar. And in that altar, all the prayers with the, of the saints were, were there. And you read it and you go like, ah, so before the throne of God, there's an altar. And somebody doesn't want to hear anything about altars. Yet we are saved because of an altar. <laughs> anyway, so this coming Sunday, it's altar visits altar. So I want you to share the broadcast, and um, it's good to see everybody. When I'm looking down, I'm looking at Facebook. Um, uh, uh, when I'm looking down here, I'm looking at uh, Facebook. When I'm looking up here, I'm looking on, um, that's our YouTube. God bless everybody. On YouTube, we have Munita. Oh, God bless you, Muni Vic Victor. Why am I so excited at this teaching? I have no idea, Victor. You should follow other teachings as well. They will help you. Trust me. 
the, the teaching that I recently uh, did called uh, dealing with the spirit of delay. Delay, if not handled, becomes denial. You must watch that teaching. Um, teach on apostle, or oh, Lord reveal my spiritual name. All right, three ways that God can reveal your spiritual name. Number one, through a dream. Number one, through a dream. Remember the Bible in the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 15. It speaks about, in fact, you read it from verse 14. It says, God speaks once, yet twice, yet men perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, slumbering upon the bed, when deep sleep falleth upon men, God speaks. So God speaks through a dream. So one of the major ways that God chose to communicate with us is in the last days is through a dream. But that's not... Uh, the only option, you know, God speaks through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's to teach us, alos paraclatus, you know, as much as Jesus spoke, spoke to us, the Holy Spirit is to speak to us, as much as Jesus spoke to his disciples, you know, face to face. So the Holy Spirit, that's why the name alos paraclatus, another one, ex same exactly like me. So that's why the Bible in the book of First John chapter 2, it speaks about the anointing will teach us, the Holy Spirit will teach us everything. So... But dreams are so important because if you can't hear the Holy Spirit, because hearing the Holy Spirit now it has to do with you yielding and you need to know how to yield yourself to hear him. But if you can do that, now guess what? Dreams. Dreams are for everybody. Dreams are actually for babies in the spirit. But dreaming dreams are for the matured. Right? So uh, I'm right, I wrote about that in my book, uh, How to Interpret Any Dream. That is coming May. So... Get ready for that book so you'll understand more. So God speaks and he can reveal your name. I remember one time I taught about this, I think the year 2015. I had a vision. I was taken, in fact, it was a trance. And uh, I was in this place and I was, as I was walking, I was told this is heaven. And there was, a, there was an angel with a big head. I remember I told you, I think it was 2015 or something. There was an angel with a big head. And uh, that angel was like standing next to a tree. And the first time, when I passed there, they called that angel with another name. But the same angel in the different location, he was called Gabagunde. Yeah, Gabagunde. I was like, what? When I woke up, the first thing that I did was to write. And in that book, uh, How to Interpret Any Dream, I'm talking also how to channel your spirit to see angels in your dream. I didn't write about it in my book, How to See Angels. But I wrote about it in this because that one is by, oh, by, by far, it's one of my favorite spiritual books, okay? I'm excited. So number one is through a dream. Number two is through a prophet. Number two is through a prophet. So number one is through a dream where you're sleeping. Somebody can call you. Remember, uh, when we speak about or talk about angels, we're not talking about men with wings every time. Hence, the Bible speaks about uh, Abraham, you know, encountering angels, and he called them and said, look, come and eat here, and cooked for them. You know, they ate uh, uh, fries, angels, they ate steak and potato, you know, <laughs> cooked for them, jelly fries, you know, he cooked for them. These were not angels, that, that's why you need to read my book, How to See Angels, it's available on Amazon. You can even type on Google, How to See Angels, it will appear right there. So, you need to get that book, or go to my website, www.mizimzwaketenkredi.org, how to see angels. So it is important for you to understand that angels, not all angels, and those that are in the school of ministry, they know, not all angels, all right? Not all angels have wings. So sometimes God, through a dream, can, you can see a man and calls you by this name. It's very important. It's very important. Me, the first thing that God, you know, showed me and helped me with was to reveal my spiritual name long time ago. One of the things that happens to a man when they encounter God, when they really have an encounter with God, is their name changes. No maganjan. So it doesn't matter who you are. Live on Facebook, Apostle, we have people saying, Apostle, you are teaching something I wasn't aware of. <laughs> and voice on YouTube says, your revelation is so deep, my Apostle. And Maxon says, this book is a must-have. Amen, amen. So, number one is through a dream, right? Amen. Did you guys get that? Amen. Number two is through a prophet. The third one will mess you up. Yeah, the third one will mess you up. 
Number one, it's in a dream. Did you hear that? Amen. Number two is through a prophet. Amen. Number three is through your intuition. Okay. Help me, Lord. You are a spirit possessing a soul, living in a body. Your soul, remember God, everything about God is three-dimensional. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Right? Inner court, outer court, holy of holies. Jesus died and resurrected on the third day. When he started preaching, he started with three words, it is written. And when he finished this ministry, he finished with three words, it is finished. When his disciples were struggling to stop the, the rain, the storm that was angry, he stood up and said, peace be still. When he went to pray, he took Peter, John, James. So why? Because everything about God, I wish I could go deep, everything about God is three-dimensional. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't know if uh, people are getting what I'm trying to say right here. So everything about God is what? Is three-dimensional. So you are a spirit possessing a soul, living in a body. Now, your soul has got your mind, your emotions, and your will. Through your mind, you choose. You think, so to say. Through your emotions, you act. And through your will, you choose. Your mind, you think. Your will, you choose. And your emotions, you act. Also, your spirit has what we call your intuition, which people call sometimes instincts. Then there is what we call your consciousness exists in the spirit, not in the soul. I wish I could teach about that, but that will confuse a lot of you now because it has nothing to do with this. You can be walking like this, and all of a sudden a name comes up. It's like you hear somebody calling you, but from the inside. You literally can hear your spirit speaking to you, to your mind, which is connected to your soul. Amen. Remember, God does not have a relationship with your soul. God has a relationship with your spirit. Amen. Your soul is not saved. Your soul is being saved. Hence, Romans 12 says what? Be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where is your mind? Connected to your soul. And it's not, it's a renewing. It's a continuous thing. So every day you have to renew your soul. Why? Because your soul is connected to your past, knows your past, yet your spirit knows your future. So for you to drag your soul to where you are, you need to constantly renew it. Hence, generational cases and bloodline cases and all these things, they are attached to the soul. When you sleep with somebody, it goes to the soul. Soul ties. You know what I mean? Amen. Of course, the Bible says, he who lays with uh, a harlot is one with a harlot. But in the spirit, is one with the hallowed, but that's actually the soul. So you can hear your name and know your name through your intuition. Animals, they have instincts, right? An animal, you see a dog, you bend down like this, like you bend like this, like this. Hey, you see a dog running. Why instincts? Of course, mine, if you do that, they don't understand that. If you bend down, they'll think, okay, you're doing something nice. So never when you come to my house, never bend down thinking that when you bend, my dogs will run. But what causes an animal to sense danger is instincts. Nobody told them, there is danger. No, instincts. So even us, some of you, you are able to move out of your house and all of a sudden you tell people, something said I must not go anywhere. It's not something. It's actually, one will say, ah, ah, what do you mean? Let me tell you what I mean. Let me tell you what I mean. This will help you. Uh, this will help you. What are people saying on YouTube? Thank you so much, Apostle. Victor, on YouTube, he can relate to the Apostle's teachings. He says, I had a name in my dream in 2016 called Gerald Gold. Gold? Gold. Gold. Yes, Apostle. Oh, I was like, hey, that name. Spiritual name, gold, I was shocked. Unless it meant greatest of all time. You know, the gold, the G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. Not that goat that jumps around and troubles people. No way, I refuse. 
What's the name of the person? It's Victor Apostle. And their name in the of the, the name, the spiritual name? It is Gerald Gold. Gerald. It's a J. -A. Oh, J. Yes, Apostle. Amen. All right. One is saying, this is too deep. Please go deep on intuition. No problem. I'll do that. Right? Because we are here for, for the teaching anyway. What you don't understand is, here on earth, to us, you are new. Like, okay, you are 13 years, meaning you have been here for 13 years. But the truth of the matter is, when it comes to God, you are way older than that. Remember, the Bible says God created the earth, ah, the world, uh, the, the beginning in the end, and the end in the beginning. Meaning God literally went to the end and started there, and went to the beginning and ended there. So God works in the reverse order. So you are going to tomorrow. God has been into tomorrow. He's coming to today. So your tomorrow or your life is nothing but a memory unto God. Before the foundation of this world, Christ was crucified. But he still had to be crucified in the physical. Why? Because life is spiritual. Now, with that being said, if God says to Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born. Now I'm about to show you how in the spirit we know people's names, right? I can literally prophesy to you knowing your name without you telling me. This is now the simple secret that, uh, you know, prophets don't reveal to anybody. Now, the Bible speaks in the book of Ecclesiastes about remembrance, remembering. Some of you, you know, you have an ability to remember, but because you don't know what's going on to you, you don't have control, you don't know what's going on with you, and you don't know what's happening at that moment in your life spiritually, you don't, con you don't have control over it, and you call it deja vu. You sit like this and you say, but I've been here before. And you have a short moment, like maybe 30 seconds, you can see things, you can put them together. It's more like your life is repeating. Right at that moment, you have tapped in, in information that has been stored in your intuition. Or your conscious. Do you know, I'll give, because I'm speaking to believers, right? So I don't, have, I don't have to be in a rush. Have you been there when you're driving? And all of a sudden, you go, Malibro Satakaika And you just keep on driving. You don't know where it came from. Guess what? Those tongues, you did not speak on, speak on those tongues that time. The Holy Spirit put them there. You just only had access. It might have been God put them 20 years ago, but you accessed them that time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I don't know how to put this. So when you are seeing the deja vu, right, simply in the spirit, you are remembering. But because you are not that deep and you don't know what's going on, it will get distracted. Oh, my God. We prophesy by remembering, especially when it comes to names. Because it has taken place in the spirit. So I just remember what happened. The Bible speaks about remembrance. Oh, my God. Ah, ah. I know what to say. It's just that I don't want to give you more than what I'm supposed to give you. <laughs> I know exactly what to say. And those that are in the school of ministry will be like, but Apostle, this is not fair. Nobody had a dream in 2006 when angel appeared and said, the child shall be called Samuel. But I was still young and asking myself, which child? So I just excused the dream. <laughs> oh my God. That's excellence, my she said, ah, an angel appeared in 2006 and said, the child shall be called Samuel. I was like, when I woke up, which child? <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody under the sound of my voice, either you missed your spiritual name or your name is not yet revealed because you don't know the importance of spiritual names. So it can be revealed in a dream. Some of you tonight, not tomorrow, tonight, as you go and rest, Kula, Brakadija, Testimonia, Kasala Bradiga, Ronda Kistana Liga, Likro Koto Koto Akonka. I'm telling you now, when you go and sleep, you won't just have dreams where you're being strangled. 
where somebody's trying to kill you or any of those dreams that you normally have. No. Those are not dreams that you're even supposed to have as a child of God. No ways. Imagine being pulled, being stretched. What is when you read the Bible in the book of Ezekiel? Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel says, And I was taken by the Spirit of the Lord. Put me on the east side of the mountain. As I looked, I saw the glory. Hi! He comes again, he says, As I was sleeping, the hand of God was so strong upon me that my spirit was full of bitterness. And the Spirit of the Lord pulled me by my hair. Aye! This guy is sleeping and he's being pulled by his hair. He's, there's so much bitterness in his spirit because the hand of the Lord was strong upon him and took him into the temple and said, these are the children of Israel. Look at what they are doing. Aye. And in Ezekiel 37, it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and took me into a valley. Aye, 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 aye. This guy is having some serious encounters. And when you read the book of Ezekiel, he says, I was in captivity. But when he begins to write, he writes like he was not in captivity. It's because he was in captivity, yet the sea spirit was in another location. But the Ezekiel that we know in chapter 1 was arrested. In, not arrested, but he was, he was a slave. He's having some strange encounters. And you as a believer, the only thing that you opt for and you want to see in your life is let me be pulled at night. And you wake up in the middle of the night and say, but God, what's going on? Ah, and God is sitting on his throne like this. <laughs> I once told somebody, I said, God, at this point in time, does not move. I says, ah, so who's moving in the church? Huh? What do you mean God? I said, ah, this is a baby here. Let me explain to my brother. God does not move and will not move. Jesus does not move and will not move until rapture. Where is Jesus now? Seated by the right hand of the Father. Seated. Why is he seated? He's done with his assignment. When he died on the cross, went up, the only thing he's waiting for is to come down. In fact, when he comes down, he doesn't touch the ground the first time. We meet him halfway. When the trumpet blows, the last trumpet, that's what the Bible says, it's the last trumpet, as in like we had the first one. <laughs> the Bible says the last trumpet, when it blows, the dead shall resurrect. Ah, what about the first one? The second one? How, how, do, how are we told about the last one if we didn't know or didn't hear the first one? Or the second last one, <laughs> for that matter? And says, we'll meet him halfway. But at this point in time, he's seated. Who is at work? The Holy Spirit. We are in the... Who does the healing? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Who does the touching? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Who does the deliverance? The Holy Spirit. Amen. I know, I know the Holy Spirit has a tendency of pushing me out of my messages, but I always try my best to come back. It's just that, you know, when he takes over something, I just can't allow him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Is this making sense to somebody? Althea's on Facebook says, oh my God, I bless the Lord for this teaching and I'm getting more excited because all questions I had about how God speaks and operates are answered. And of course, on Friday, ah oh no, sorry, on Thursday, right? On Thursday, when? Thursday. We are having our dream interpretation service. Yes. I'm continuing to interpret people's dreams. You know, um, going deeper, going deeper, going deeper, going deeper. Somebody saying, I'm so much excited in my spirit. Somebody saying, um, I always hear a voice calling a certain name and I'll be ignoring it. You know what, Mike? That's from the intuition. It's more like you have been called by that name in the spirit. And now you are, it's more like the deja vu. So when you are here, in your spirit, you can hear that name echoing. So you kind of hear it, but just as you can't control deja vu, so you can't control what's happening at that moment. Hence, you're kind of like, mm -mm, why am I hearing that name? Yet at that moment, your name is being called. Are we flowing together? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to keep you. It's our Tuesday service, and thank you so much for tuning in and for passing by. And if it was your first time, 
tuning in and watching us, thank you for passing by. God bless you for that. I believe you have been transformed and your life will never be the same again. But hold on. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, I want to pray with you quick, quickly, and I'm not going to waste your time. Just pray with me. Just pray and say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for remembering me. I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior, and I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. Thank you for your blood. Clean me and cleanse me. Purify me and make me holy. I surrender my life. I surrender everything that has to do with me unto your will, Lord. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, be with me, walk with me, touch me, and teach me. In Jesus' name, Father, forgive me for all things I've done wrong against your will. In Jesus' name, I'm a child of God. Glory be to God. So, if, if you want help, in terms of you growing in your walk with God, text the numbers that are appearing on the screen. And of course, we have our leader, Sister Tamari. She will reach out to you and she will help you. She will give you materials that will help you grow books and things that are actually summarized. And trust me, you'll be built. You'll build yourself using the word of God. The Bible speaks about those who are unskillful when it comes to the word of righteousness. These ones are babes. Hallelujah. So we, we are not just teaching milk, but we are teaching solid stuff. But because you are a babe, we have prepared something that you can digest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord. So if I come here and you are a babe and I say, metaschematizo or transfigure, and you'll be like, what is he talking about? Hallelujah. So if you are born again and you are, you know, you are bona fide and you are baptized, you are can talking, no problem. I want you to join us this coming Thursday. I'm telling you, a moment with us is never a waste of time. I'm telling you, you don't come to such broadcasts and remain the same. You grow spiritual. Talk about spiritual growth. Come here. Hence, you see, the devil does not have business and doesn't have any business fighting people who are not going anywhere. People who have no substance or no value. Hallelujah. So, 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 so sometimes the way the enemy fights you determines what a man carries. Hence, you need to be led by the spirit, not by emotions or information. Yes. Hallelujah, but by revelation. So I want you on Thursday, 8 o'clock, Central African time, South African Standard Time, to be with us right here live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, on Twitter, and also on Instagram. Do not miss it for anything. And before we finish, I will want you to go ahead and give your substance on our website, mizimzwaketencredit.org.org. And guess what? On the 8th, which I believe that it will be postponed because of what we have coming as a church, as a ministry, we are having our business and relationship seminar, our buzz 2021. My beautiful wife, Charisma, will be joining me. So if you're somebody who wants to grow in your, your relationship, you know, you want to see change and um, you want to build with your partner and you want to start a business. You know, you have not started a business or you have a business, but you just want to grow as well. Guess what? Buzz is for you. Buzz is for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're single, you are married, or you are just a dating couple, or you are engaged. Guess what? Buzz is for you. Be where God is, not where God used to be. Hallelujah. So I want you to go to Buzz, B-A-R-S. 2021.com, buzz2021.com, and sign up and register for that seminar. It's online. It's actually a webinar, but because we are used to calling it seminar, so it's a seminar. So go there. Now, for your giving and your offering, um, go to our website. Go to our website and, um, and just give your substance right there. Just give your substance right there. Go to our website. And give your substance right there. Apostle, there is a testimony from WhatsApp. Z says, before the dream interpretation live service, I used to forget all my dreams. 
but now I remember all of them. Thank God for the apostles' teachings. Wow. So somebody used to forget their dreams. But as we said, you know, some, as we said that as you watch, you'll remember your dreams. There will be deliverance. Mm. So the person was watching and, uh, and they started remember the, the remembering their dreams. Yes, apostle. Such teachings, you don't, you don't just watch them in vain, people. How glorious. My apostle, bring it on, mom, learning. Somebody say, are you going just like that? Please continue. Yes, um, we are not out of good news, but we are just out of time. Somebody said, are you going just like that? <laughs> I don't know what I was I supposed to say for the person to know that I'm about to go. The person like, just like that, you are, you are done. <laughs> On Thursday, my sister, my brother, we are back. And trust me, come to our ministry, Midrand. Oh, my goodness. And as a matter of fact, this coming Sunday, I believe, will be in Midrand Conference Center. Where it all began. So, Midrand Conference Center. Altar visits altar. And remember, you are coming with what? With papers. And you know we're going to do some prophetic stuff right there. Oh, yes. So, be there. Come with your diary. Be there. And some people, just like a guy who came, uh, I think it was that other Sunday, who said, I had a lot of stories about you. I came to test. <laughs> Come and taste. I said the same thing on Sunday. I say sometimes you just need to come and taste your thing. Things for yourself, you know, just come and taste. Be led by the Spirit, of course. Just come and say, okay, I want to see myself. I want to encounter it myself. I don't want to hear about it. But I'm not saying you must come because you're coming for the gift. Come for, for the giver. Come for the source, not the resource. That's not what I'm saying. But it's also good sometimes that you move by the Spirit. If your doctrine is in error, your discernment is in error. So people err because they don't know the word of God. Imagine us, our, Christ, our Christianity now, our believers now, they are so weak that they want somebody who's not even born again to tell them who's a true prophet or who's not a false, who's a false prophet. Somebody who's not even born again, standing like this and telling you and you are born again, you're like, yes, something is wrong with you. Somebody messed you with. We need to stop letting people who don't know about him tell us about him. We need to stop letting people who don't have a relationship with him tell us about him. So go ahead on our website and um, come for the word. Yay, come for the word. Exactly, come for the word. I'm telling you, we are people of the word. As you know, our ministry is a word-centered ministry. We are people of the word. So let's go. Uh, people are giving actually on our website and God bless everybody that is giving for their offering. Uh, we also do have, I don't know this name, but uh, okay, Ikram. I know Ikram. I don't know if Ikram is part of the partners, but I know. Uh, I have George who just gave as well. God bless you, George. Daunane. God bless you for your offering, Daunane. Uh, gave uh, on our paper $50. God bless you. And uh, we have, oh my God, Pradeep. Pradeep is always giving anyway. Pradeep. Remember, we didn't know who Pradeep was until we found him on Facebook. Amen. A man from India. And um, Technology company just gave. I have no idea who technology company is. May God bless you and your company. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. So we have people that are giving, and these are just some of the names. Of course, people are giving through our website, and some are giving through our banking details. And uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's give and give and give and give and give. Why? Because, I mean, we are being blessed spiritually. We know that the work of God continues to grow. Uh, you know, so many things are being taken care of uh, in our ministry. In our ministry, as you know, that we are forever growing. We are forever challenging ourselves and forever going from one level to another level. And God bless Queen for your offering. You see, God doesn't really care how much you give. He cares about your heart. So God bless Queen. You know, Queen, you can tell that what they just gave right now is... Uh, is very prophetic. 
Yes, it's very prophetic. It's very prophetic. And tomorrow is my wife's birthday, eh? Yeah, so tomorrow is my wife's birthday. Let's celebrate her life. You can't celebrate me and not celebrate my wife, right? So it actually means a lot to me when you celebrate my wife than me. I handle you with your problems. She handles me with you on top. Hallelujah. So let's celebrate the woman of God. You know, she, 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 she's, 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 a, she's a powerhouse. She's a powerhouse, you know. I've never met a woman who carries so much presence, you know, in my life than my wife. You know, when, when she's in a place, you can feel she's in a place. She does not have to say anything. How she carries herself, how she handles herself. Oh, my God. You just feel something is happening right here. So, mother of nations, I want us to celebrate her um, tomorrow, the 21st of April. So if you have data, go ahead, you know, uh, send her a message if you can, and um, it's important. I love you. I love you. I'm signing out, and i uh, see you on Thursday. See you on what? On Thursday. For what? <clears throat> Dream Interpretation Part 2. And God bless everybody. So Sunday, we are away in Santin, right? Ugh, in Midrand, right? Midrand, Johannesburg. So come and see us Sunday. Amen. Signing out. God bless you. Amen. How to See Angels by Ms. Mazwaki Tancredi. Materializing the supernatural into the natural. Hard copy available now on Amazon Kindle or order at www.mismazwakitancredi.org. The love of God can be so strong in you that you don't fear nothing. You just want to get the job done. You just want to see people coming out of poverty. You just want to see people coming out of the streets. You just want to see the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached all over the world. Partnership is much more than being on a mailing list. You can say that partnership is the bridge that connects two sides. On one side you have individuals, businesses, ministries, and on the other side you have the work of the ministry, the rewards for the work of the ministry, and the ministry's grace. The bridge of partnership rests upon two fundamental pillars. One pillar is prayer, the other is finances. Fast and beats abnormally, and all of a sudden it's fine. All of a sudden, breath 
It's like I need to go outside to no. catch my breath. That's how I feel. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling as you're touching yourself and I'm next to you. But the anointing of God is going to touch you. For you, you can't smell at all. At all. Nothing. Lost sense of smell. smell it you can smell it she's still shocked look at that you cannot come here and go back there saying i feel like prophesying but you're not ready i see water Ibona marks i see a picture of this person Ibona is talking about being put in a body see thrown in a river Fagwa and they're speaking and they're something like gnomes I'm with Mama and originally from Eastern Cape, she was one of the people that were located by the Apostle. Baba, we are one two song about we are what gala gala, what you say name Angazanga Aiz. So, like, come on, could you gala? It's me because if I am it's the name I'm Gugalata. It's something like gala or something. Gala, gala. There's something like nomzi. What Ubaba couldn't cast Ibonayo from Eastern Cape? Nibaba in Eastern Cape, not in Zalolacon. One Jaluku Ubaba couldn't cast from Eastern Cape. Le cast at Isuka Nina twenty three years old. Around the age of twenty three, Iminago twenty three. I see water. Ibona Mans. I see a picture of this person. Ibona is Tom Salomon. Being put in a bottle. Fagwa a bottle. Thrown in a river. Fagwa a man. And they are speaking. Who are you connected to from Eastern Cape? Oba no man zio pume Eastern Cape. A kayak say Eastern Cape. Mecha, mecha, mecha. Because whatever went wrong, whatever is, it was done in Eastern Cape. Ian zagele Eastern Cape. One boost of putting Oba no age. What can I see aging with whom my first book? What Ubana Ikes is suka from whom is see a Utuma, Utuma, Wemka engine, Unonyaka, Angas and Sakuminai. I can phone nail, I can phone you, Umbisangama, at and sing Mama White. A West Bin, Aknanto Yam Isanganai, Impilo Yamje, Pialunga, Pindog Valet. So ye are lend Ibang and Dobana, Nim Temp, um prophet to go to Kunendo and Kulu as an eye, Moba Utuma de Pemaloma Draxi. But yes, man, Sangana non prophet, Miss Buza Umbuzu Kuti, Ubuyapi, and Uteka Ekala Uteta. What is Africa? E Africa Bukon Butakati, Mubone Kum Kutu Takati Bukon. So Tandazela, and as soon as I pray for you and I lay my hand on you, not only you, I went away at one. But God is going to set your children God free. To God. To God. Because, because what I just told her, it's already happening in a kid's life. You don't know Africa, you. Africa. <laughs> Some of you are fighting battles. That did not start with you. You are fighting your mother's battles. And you couldn't I tell you what you could have a call or cause of our pupayen. But me, in the if mene, if mena ukuma, lam sand exen, and phone lamo six, and was good in writing now. See, let me write in now. Put a maker to tell us the lacan and pinning as good when they get any now. But being silver, something else, you can zimben, a figure la peminuen, emilenzen. That is why not today, Nizil, Nizokuti, Pagamisa, Amanda, and Kankulunku. Lo, I can't say, 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 I can't
God says unto Moses, I want you to go and deliver my people. One question Moses has is when I arrive to the children of Israel, who shall I say has sent me? And God being God in his mighty capacity, he thought to himself, if I say I am Jehovah Jireh, what about Jehovah Nisi? If I say I am Jehovah Fikenu, what about Jehovah Hakavod. If I say I'm Jehovah El Kohen Kedem, what about Jehovah Rofika? If I say I am the God of the living, what about the dead? And God moved beyond the curtain of time. Ah, he gave Moses what I call a grammatically wrong statement. He knows that Moses you'll be with Pharaoh in the future. But when you get to Pharaoh, you won't say I was that I was has sent me. And God looked at Moses and he said, when you get there, tell them that I am, that I am has sent you. Why I am that I am. So that when you want him as a deliverer, he says, I am. If you want him as a Jehovah, my car, I am. I don't know who's trusting God for a business here. Jehovah, my business, I am. Jehovah, my decree, I am. Jehovah, my millions, I am. Jehovah, my marriage, I am. Jehovah, my billions, somebody shout, I am.